So on the day when I'm recording this, this is what's happening to our sun. It sort of looks like this. It seems to have a giant hole right in the middle, approximately five times bigger than the planet Jupiter. And this enormous hole is blasting the entire solar system with extremely powerful solar wind. Although luckily for us, it did not result in any major solar storms and also did not produce any major CMEs or coronal mass ejections. So in that sense, we got kind of lucky. But lucky for now. Because according to the recent study, the sun is still approaching its maximum and it's most likely going to peak in its activity sometime in 2024, possibly 2025. And so when it comes to the solar activity, for the next maybe couple of years, maybe three years, a lot of scientists are going to be really, really nervous. Mostly because some scientists expect a really large emission and an extremely large CME or coronal mass ejection that can potentially disrupt our technology and even potentially cause a lot of blackouts around the planet. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. In this video, I actually wanted to discuss a few recent studies that kind of touch on a lot of topics in regards to these very powerful storms, but specifically, they actually focus on analysis from a few historical events from the last 200 years. Something that was documented pretty well. And something that we know today, in theory, if it actually happens, can cause dramatic changes to our technological society and potentially create a serious problem for a lot of people around the planet. We don't really know exactly what it's going to do just yet, but we can start guessing by looking at some of the previous examples from events like the famous Carrington event. Although in this video, we're not going to focus too much on this. Actually, mostly because there's a video in the description that describes a lot of this in detail in case you're curious. And also because nothing new has been discovered about this so far. But what most people don't realize is that this is not the only such event in the last 200 years. Or basically what I'm trying to say here is that Carrington-like events actually happened at least three times that we know of in the last 200 years. And one of them was actually relatively recently when humanity was already using electricity, telegraph, and already had cables going under the sea in order to conduct communication. And so let's discuss these events a little bit more and talk about this recent study that has just discovered something else nobody actually knew about before. Let's talk about the most recent Carrington-like event. Okay, if I keep calling them Carrington events, this is going to get really confusing really quick. We'll just call these mm, a huge solar storm. Okay, so there was actually one in 1921. Sometimes it's referred to as the May 1921 geomagnetic storm, but it's more commonly known as the New York Railroad Storm because this unusual storm had a huge effect on the United States. The sudden surge in the electric currents sparked a number of fires across the US and actually across the entire planet with a really huge one in the Grand Central Terminal. If you've been to New York, you know what it is. And if you haven't, Think big railroad station in New York. And there you go, Grand Central Terminal. And so the surge of electricity started a major fire here, which was widely reported, making this event known as the New York Railroad Storm. But it also had a major disruption to all telegraph services across the entire country, virtually stopping it for approximately 12 hours. And this was mostly due to a lot of blown fuses and a lot of damaged equipment. And so basically, anything that involved some kind of a radio cable would not function anymore and in some cases set things on fire. Ironically though, because of the changes in the ionosphere, a lot of radio propagation or a lot of radio waves were actually increased in power, making long distance communication through radio waves a little bit more efficient. And also quite surprisingly, the street lamps or electric lights were not affected at all either. But in terms of power, a lot of recent studies established that it was extremely similar to the Carrington event. Maybe a little bit weaker, but still quite strong. But I guess what's really important is that this actually happened approximately 62 years after the Carrington event. Which already kind of implies that this is not as uncommon as we thought. But one of the recent studies from December of 2023 discovered something else nobody expected. There's a third event. And it kind of happened around the same time. The event that happened in 1872. Basically 13 years after the Carrington event. And in case you're wondering what you're looking at, this is a painting from that time. It basically shows us very, very surprised Japanese that for the first time ever have actually seen Northern Lights in the region where they've never seen it before. And so in this recent study, 22 researchers from around the planet 
decided to combine forces and it discovered that a lot of people around the planet, in the regions you see right here, seem to have witnessed something going on and more importantly, felt it as well. This was a huge solar storm. And it didn't just result in aurora, visible in places in India and even in the Middle East, but once again it also affected telegraph, disrupted the early power grids and even had effects in the tropics. In this case, this is a report from India that basically talks about a major interruption in communication between one of the earliest cables from Bombay in India all the way to the Middle East. And this cable ran under the oceans, meaning that the storm affected things underwater as well. And more officially, this event is known as Chapman Silverman Storm. A storm that the scientists were even able to track down to exact sunspots that were being tracked by scientists from Belgium and Italy. And even though here it was mostly hand-drawn, it was still pretty accurate. With the source of the storm very likely being some kind of a medium-sized sunspot group extremely close to the solar disk center. So basically the one you see right here. But even though the sunspots were not very big, it resulted in one of the most powerful emissions. As you can see, the effects were seen everywhere. In this case, the scientists were able to collect a lot of different verbal recounts of what they saw in the night skies, usually aurora, which normally indicate extremely powerful geomagnetic storm. And this was of course collected in different languages from different countries. And surprisingly, a lot of these aurora even went down to approximately 20 degrees in latitude in both hemispheres, which of course implies an extremely powerful storm. Normally, most aurora do not get that close to the equator. They mostly stay around the polar regions. And this of course means that there have been at least three major solar storms in the last two centuries. With all three relatively powerful and all three potentially super dangerous for modern technology. For example, the modern banking system is absolutely not ready for anything like this. Not to mention our satellites, the telecommunication infrastructure system, and of course, the internet, the YouTube. My living, my livelihood is in danger, huh? Anyway, the main point is that this happened at least three times in the last two centuries. And it also means that it might happen again. We don't really know when, and we don't really know exactly what it's going to do, but it might happen. Actually, no, that's wrong. It will happen. We just don't really know when. And it will very likely have a major impact on the entire infrastructure of our modern society. But there are some maybe good news as well from a different study you can find in the description. Although here I guess the word good is maybe not the best word to use. Different news. We have some different discoveries that are slightly more positive. Turns out, and this is once again based on observations from another solar storm in 1977, mostly in Scandinavia, the strength of magnetic storms hitting the planet will vary dramatically over extremely short distances. Some places only kilometers apart will actually have very different magnetic disruptions. Or just to rephrase this, certain areas are going to be much more vulnerable than other areas. For example, where you live, you might have no effect whatsoever, but someone down the block or a few kilometers away from you might have a dramatic effect where things are going to start burning, destroying everything. With many effects detected from the study right here, suggesting a huge variability in power in many regions in Scandinavia that were affected by the 1977 storm. So some locations would feel almost nothing, other locations would feel something that's hundreds of times stronger. With the main reason behind this, very likely being what's actually underneath the surface, along with the structure of the atmosphere above and the ionosphere that affects everything. Specifically today, we know that soil conductivity seems to play a huge role in all of this. Basically, when the ground is conductive, it seems to have a lot more effect. And this is one of the main reasons why back in 1989, my home province of Quebec, in Canada, for those of you who are not from Canada, experienced one of the worst such events ever. It's known as the March 1989 geomagnetic storm, and it basically collapsed the entire grid in the entire province. Yet, it did not affect other provinces as much. And this is because it just so happens that Quebec seems to have that superconductive soil in certain locations. Although I'm sure there are some other reasons we still don't really understand, but this is one of the main reasons we know so far. And so when it comes to these Carrington-like events or super super powerful magnetic storms, certain locations are really going to struggle quite a lot. There are going to be fires, there's going to be a lot of destruction of anything to do with electricity or cables, 
and potentially the entire system is going to be shut down for many days. Yet, in other locations, people not might feel anything. And the important part is that we don't actually know which regions are safe and which are not. Now, there's actually a video in the description that has some clues about this and even provides certain maps based on conductivity at least. But when it comes to understanding how to prevent this, we obviously have to understand what makes certain locations safe. Is it just the soil? Is it something else above us? Is it the atmosphere? The ionosphere? I mean, the winds, the mountains, the water? There has to be some kind of a scientific answer. And that is, of course, something we don't have yet. But we need it so badly, because if this actually happens sometime soon, my YouTube career is probably going to be finished. Uh, that's not good. And so, in order to prepare for such an event, and in order to actually be ready for whatever happens, these types of studies are super important, and we definitely have to figure out why geomagnetic storms seem to have a lot more power, like hundreds of times more power, in specific locations on the planet. And then, obviously, not build anything in those locations, anything important. And because we know that most of these storms seem to usually happen around the peak of the solar activity, at this point, a lot of scientists are kind of worried. It might happen in 2024, it might happen in 2025, or it might happen during the next cycle. But it's definitely going to happen at some point in the future. This is just what history tells us. Three such events in the last 200 years, with the fourth one possibly following soon. But, at least for now, that's kind of all we know. These are really exciting studies, maybe somewhat unnerving studies, but still very interesting. And we'll definitely come back and talk more about these once there are some more discoveries or more clarification. Until then, thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos and additional studies in the description below, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description in case a geomagnetic storm ends my YouTube career sometime soon. Huh. Anyway, on a more serious note, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.